Claire Charters. She is the Associate Professor at AUT um, and she joins us on the show this morning. Good morning to you, Claire. Good morning. Actually, Auckland Uni, but good morning. Oh, it's Auckland University of Technology, isn't it? It is. <laughs> No, yes. or just Auckland University, Auckland Law School. Oh, it's Auckland Law School. Auckland University. Yep. Oh, okay. Auckland University Law All School. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, when our producers rang you up, what did they ask you to talk about? Uh, they said that you'd read something in the Herald about the constitutional transformation court at all that we're having. Is that That's right? exactly right. And when and 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 I'm I'm I wondered if as a result of that article, because I think you're also a member of the Royal Society of New Zealand too, aren't you? And that was... Uh, I've got funding from the Royal Society rather than a member of. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, um, and you, uh, they are organising this with you, Claire, this constitutional review? The Royal Society? Yes. No, this is organised with, um, uh, with support from the Boren Foundation. Right. And you're doing yep. a forum basically on the... On, on consti- well, potential constitutional arrangements for New Zealand looking forward. Who, That's right. who is going to be invited to that particular forum? Anyone is welcome to come. In fact, we'd love to see as many people as possible and from, from all um, parts, I guess, of the political spectrum. But we've got an amazing lineup of uh, speakers from around the globe. Um, speak, we're particularly focused on Māori and Indigenous rights issues. So we've got some of, yeah, some of the world's most leading um, commentators, writers, thinkers, um, politicians, etc., um, on Indigenous peoples' rights globally. Now it's you really say really you awesome say, to have them all together. Right now, my understanding is that your your personal political view on this one is that New Zealand um, needs to address the constitutional issue, particularly in the wake of Queen Elizabeth's death, to discuss things um, moving forward. And that New Zealand has, has hasn't. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm reading sort of Radio Watia here, who suggests yeah. that that you think that there has been a, uh, if you like, uh, an inability to appreciate the Maori perspective um, in our constitutional matters. Is that right? The, the bit about um, the, the Queen passing and the relevance of that, that's, that's more an issue that I think has come up in, in other places. I've always thought that there needs to be some address or uh, some attention, I guess, to the question of um, constitutional recognition of, of Māori rights. So I guess the context uh, currently is that with the Queen's passing, there is more talk about, um, uh, the, the I guess, the constitutional powers. Um, but... Yeah, it's always been a long-standing view that um, of mine that there should be some form of constitutional, I guess, recognition of Māori rights. Are you there? Yes, sorry. Well, that that would be expressed, though, Claire, because I guess from... I, I, at the moment, I'm looking at... We don't have a written constitution, as you know. Um, no. Everything I thought was going sort of tickety boo, but we really never really discussed. I mean, there's been the appeal court um, cases of the late eighties, early nineties, uh, sort of setting out what the Treaty of Waitangi has, uh, what it does and doesn't say. There's been a quiet constitutional revolution almost since that, but there hasn't actually been um, a formal discussion within Parliament. How do you anticipate moving forward? in terms of incorporating what you think is important into future constitutional arrangements. Do you you mean sort of what what might the process for that be? Yeah. Yeah, what what do you think? Well, I I, I don't think that there's... (laughs) Funnily enough, I don't think there's any kind of set process um, that we have to follow when it comes to constitutional reform, I guess, there's all sorts of different ways in which other states do it, but usually, funnily enough, too, that they're set out by the respective constitutions <laughs> and the written constitutions. So we don't have that kind of, I guess, guidance in the sense, as you say, we don't have a written constitution that says how constitutional reform could and should happen. Um, so I guess in my own view, I, um, if you're going to have... Um, this kind of unifying experience of um, constitutional um, coming together and agreeing on some sort of basic constitutional structure, I think you'd have to have um, a a vast majority, something more probably than than a simple majority of New Zealanders agreeing to it and a process whereby we can all contribute into what that constitution might look like. 
But as I say, there's, there's, you know, we're flying a bit blind in the sense of without a written constitution saying how constitutional change should sort of formally happen, um, we're going to have to come up with our own ideas of processes, of appropriate processes. Okay, let's cut to the chase here. Um, the There is a great deal of unease um, expressed um, often by my callers, and I'm sure you're aware, that co-governance means that Māori will assume a greater politically prominent role than has been the case well, today or yesterday, uh, yeah. going into the future. What yes. does, and and I, my understanding is that you're a strong supporter of co-governance uh, and of uplifting, if you like, uh, Māori political aspirations into the mainstream. Yes. Them. Can you explain to me, though, and to us, what co-governance means to you? So, I think co-governance, well, in fact, actually, it's funny, isn't it? Because I actually tend to use the word, uh, the, the word self-determination um, rather than co-governance. But, but I think some, there's some overlap in the ideas. Um, I certainly think that uh, Māori should have um, some authority and, in some cases, shared authority over some matters. So that might include, for example, um, authority on the spaces where the state basically should um, stay out. And when it comes to then some areas um, of joint interests, that there should be some shared um, okay, can power you, and authority. Can you there. give me an example of areas that the state should stay out of? Like marae spaces. Right. So, so I don't think that, that, that so I think Tikanga Māori should be the, the regulatory system, I guess that that regulates on a marae. So you're uh, uh, sorry. We're not about. That would, that's just one example. About thirty years ago, I went and did a tour of um, uh, the United States, and one of the places I went were Indian reservations, which have yes. their own justice system, and yes. in some ways the state stops at the borders, and within that, yeah. they're very much in charge of their own affairs. Is that what you're yes. anticipating for New Zealand as well? I don't think that we have the contextual sort of right circumstances to emulate what, what happens in the US. Um, you know, geographically, we're really different. Our history, um, we're very different. But I guess to the extent that, say, for example, on Marae, there should be some spaces that where Māori have authority. I guess in that in that. In that kind of sense, yes, but it's such a different context and space. But yeah, there's certainly there's certainly things that we can learn from from that example of the US and their, you know, ongoing, you know, the, the almost 600 tribes who have, um, you know, their own distinct um, jurisdiction and their inherent sovereignty recognised. But it's it's such a different context here that I, I don't think you'd emulate that exactly, and certainly not in the same geographical way. Claire, just explain to me, though, then, what you mean by authority on the Marae. Does that mean that the Resource Management Act won't apply, that the Building Acts won't apply? Is it, is it that petty, is, or is something much more involved? Um, I think there's something, there's something much more involved in the sense that it would be on the Māori that would determine how those spaces and places are regulated. Um, and, like, I guess um, what, what might be similar with the US is that what you'd have to do in those marae spaces um, is work out the relationship between um, state law and tikanga Māori in those spaces. So, for example, you mentioned, say, building laws or, the, or, or RMA. You'd have to work out together between the, the various different parties how and if those laws apply on the marae spaces. But ultimately, it would be about law, tikanga Māori regulating what happens in those spaces. Um, hey, Pua Pua. That's just, that's, just one, that's just one example, though. That's, you know, that's just to give you an example. Sure. Um, hey, Pua Pua yep. was the reaction of uh, a bunch of, um, well, a group of Maori academics to New Zealand yep. signing the United Nations Declaration on Indigenous Rights. Um, yes. Now, you were involved, I think, in, 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 as an author of that in some part, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, I chaired. You, so you chaired the group, group. Who, who, who wrote Hey Pua Pua? I did. Right. Hey Pua Pua, yeah. Uh, now, I'm, I'm interested in whether or not, because that seemed, and remember I'm a Pākehā New Zealander, what, fifth generation, that yep. seemed very much a treatise on um, Māori sovereignty rather than on co-governance. Mm -hmm. Have I got that wrong? 
It was neither in a way. Um, it was it was about coming up with options for the government or New Zealand actually really to, on how it might and practically realise the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People. So it covered rights to culture, equality, um, self-determination, lands, territories and resources and participation in governance. So it was kind of neither of those things. I guess that the bits that were picked up on in the press were bits about um, sharing authority, the self-determination bits. Um, yeah, so it, was, it wasn't really either of those two things. It was a lot broader than that and um, wasn't really treated so much as a menu. Right. Um, but nevertheless, I, I guess moving forward, uh, Hey Purpa seemed, well, it does. It says, listen, Māori have the right to determine their own future, um, almost independent of the existing state. Uh, and there were aspects of that in, in the document, yes? Not really, because in the sense that the, the idea with Yapopo and the idea, in fact, of the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples is certainly about um, finding ways in which Indigenous peoples and states can, I guess, work harmoniously together. So um, it's actually more about... I guess, ultimately bringing people together. But the, I guess some of the means that, and you know, based on a lot of research coming out of, for example, Harvard, the means for doing that is often by giving, it's usually empirically proven to be by having spaces for Māori or Indigenous authority in places and spaces. Mm, it says, though, I mean, in the introduction, that the meaning of self-determination, I mean, you know what it says, the meaning of self-determination mm -hmm. and how it is exercised is up to indigenous yes. peoples to determine. Um, yes, but in, in a state setting, and you'll, you'll see also we talk about sort of joint governance and, and spaces about also needing to work as a nation together on these issues. So, yeah. What do you say to people who say, listen, we live in one country, that's New Zealand. Mm. Um Everybody here has equal opportunities. Um, yeah. Obviously, you're a professor of law, so you've done very, very well for yourself. Um, you, we are, we are not one peoples. We are different peoples, but we are one mm -hmm. country. Uh, mm -hmm. And that one person, one vote. We live in a democratic. We should, we should live by democratic decisions. What would you say in response yeah. to that? Well, there's, there's lots lots to um, unpack there. Um, so on the, I guess on the equality point, um, you know, I, I, I think equality is, is in, uh, really important, obviously. In fact, I think it's fundamental. Um, and you need equality to come together as a unified nation. And I think, I think there's probably a lot of agreement on that kind of principles point. I guess... I think if we look around us, um, we see the ongoing effects of colonisation, which are reflected in you know, incarceration, criminal justice, health, education, this is pretty much every industry that you can think of. We see a great deal of inequality, um, and unfortunately, colonisation you know, has been proven to interfere with that ideal of equality of opportunity. So if you've, you know, inverted commas, lost or your land, um, then you don't and and um, you don't have as much opportunity as those who have land, for example. So, to achieve the equality that you need to have a unified nation, you need to have, um, I guess, um, similar benefits, um, and that's just not what we're seeing, unfortunately. And can I can I come back on that one though? I. Okay. Uh, and then there's a democracy point, so let's not forget that one, because I think that's an important one. Well, too. okay, the democracy point. Um, I, I guess a good example of this would be that um, um, the, the Canterbury legislation that was passed through for the Canterbury Regional Council for ECAN uh, that puts... With the Naitahu. Yes. Yeah, puts Naitahu on. Yeah. Is that the mm -hmm. model that you see as a model for all of local government where there is automatically um, mm. local 
mana whenua or local iwi representatives mm. on those forms of um, political organisations, those, those representative assemblies? I think it's, it's one model, and if that um, is the model that um, the people of that local area think is going to, to work, um, yeah, absolutely. Um, if, if that's the best way of doing that in that context, of course. Okay. So, but I'm not set on any. I guess. I guess the point being, my my point being, I'm not set on any particular structure. That is certainly one way to include um, Māori voices in that local um, governance so space. Th- so that brings us to this. But wouldn't cons- have to. It wouldn't have to be. Wouldn't have to be the the only the only way. And that functions a bit like our. I guess um, a, a bit like our. Māori seats in, in national parliament. <clears throat> yes, um, but that's interesting, isn't it? Because parliament now is comp- is representative, at least proportionately, in terms of yep. numbers of Māori. I yes. mean, at, at the moment, yep. I think Māori are over-represented in parliament, if you add all those. Mm-hmm. From, um, doesn't that suggest that the political system, as it works at the moment, is working? That Māori are representative? That their voices yep. are taken... Not just yeah. seriously, but as it, but it, but they have a, a, a really prominent important. a prominent role. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I I do think that that's something really new, unique about New Zealand too, and you see that um, globally. Um, and yeah, I do think it's I do think it's a a, a really good thing. The the problem I, I I guess that you get, and this is kind of, we're circling back to that that point about democracy. The problem that you get is that when and if. Um, the majority thinks that its interests are going to be, um, I guess, interfered with by Māori rights, then there is still a majority um, that can, I guess, undermine those rights. And we saw that in the Forshaw and Seabed case, I think, from my perspective at least. So that you're protecting against the excesses of um, the majority or the tyranny of the majority. There's still that need there, even if you've got some participation in governance because it's still a minority. And this is true of not just Māori, but of any minority group. Um, there needs to be some protection against that, that, ter- that potential tyranny. And look, New Zealand has got such a... Um, such a unique, let's say, um, outlier kind of understanding of democracy where we don't have higher law protecting rights. Um, so all the other democracies that we often compare to ourselves to do have these protections of rights to, to protect against tyranny of the majority. And, you know, the, the seats are a, a, a fantastic tool. I think well, they are a tool to, to allow voice, but you still, I think, need that extra element to protect against, you know, Okay, well, let's, let's pick that point up, because in, in part, you would have common cause, I would have thought, with the anti-vaccination, anti-mandate movement, where mm-hmm. 10 mm-hmm. New Ze- 10% of New Zealanders would argue exactly what yeah. you've just argued, yeah. that the tyranny yeah. of the majority stripped them of their individual right um, and, and individual freedoms and choice. Would, would you concur yes. with that? I certainly think that... I mean, yes, on on one level, yes, absolutely. Um, Whenever any person's rights um, are interfered with, that that you need to make sure that they are protected. I guess in that particular instance, and also with Māori rights, um, the the way kind of rights work as a a matter of law is that when when you're balancing rights, and particularly with the mandate, um, instance, you're balancing particular rights there, right? The, the, the right of the various different freedom of, of the individuals who don't want to be vaccinated. On the other hand, you've got um, the interests of everyone else's right to health um, to the extent that vaccinations um, can help us be healthier in the, in the COVID um, pandemic um, or stay healthier. Um, so you've got multiple rights at stake there. You don't just have the rights of the individuals who don't want to be vaccinated, you also have the rights of the rest of the community, the other... But Claire, that, 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 that logic works, well, that logic works the other way too. I don't want your, uh, I don't want Maori rights to impinge upon my freedoms either. That's right. So you have to balance. That's, that's right. It's, it's a balance. That's right. Mm. But at least if you've got a rights framework, 
um, around it, you actually have that sensible discussion rather than it just be determined and, and you have legal outcomes that have to balance these rights rather than just being determined by the, the whim of the majority. Um, so which so all leads... A bit more, the, the process is, is, is much more robust. Which, which and, leads us very nicely to the constitutional conference that you are uh, yeah, part hosting. Yeah, exactly. Um, which exactly. is, is where, where and when, please? So we'd love to see people in Auckland from the 21st to the 23rd of November. Right. And it's held at Auckland, Auckland. University. It is. That's right. right. Uh, will it be on st on, on screen, um, um, online? You c it, we will have a virtual, we do have a virtual um, option. Um, yes. Yeah. So you can sign up for that. Right. Yep. And how would we get to that? To, to, to sign up you for? You would it? go to, I think it's dub 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 constitutional court all dot ac dot nz if you if you google constitutional yeah. court at all yeah auckland university you should get there all right um and finally somebody said to me you are the goddaughter of winston peters is that right or wrong yeah <laughs> i'm i no, i'm not i'm not his goddaughter but um my father and him are very close friends ah Yes, well, he would have a different view on this, of course. <laughs> Absolutely, of course. <laughs> I hope he's there. Absolutely. Are you inviting he him? He does. <laughs> I hope he comes. Oh, no, well, you make sure you invite him, Claire. Um, <laughs> hey, nice to talk to you. Thanks very much You're for joining welcome. us this morning. Appreciate it. Ta. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Now, um, yes, sorry, I, um, Claire was the... Not at AUT, my apologies. She was at um, Auckland Law School. She is the associate professor. That's where I got my A's mixed up. My apologies for that. Well, you heard it. And the reason I think that was very good was uh, she was the chair of Hey Pua Pua. Um, on the face of it, she seems a very sane person, doesn't she, to you? But you might disagree absolutely with the conclusions of where she is going. Uh, and you have the opportunity to disagree with that at conference. But it'd be interesting to get your reaction also to that interview.